welcome back to the channel guys so i'll be talking a little bit more about the intel 13th and 14th gen instability issues that have been reported by quite a few users intel finally came out and addressed these issues and basically offered some guidance in what recommendations they um, would give to users that are experiencing these issues now personally i've earned the 12900k 13900k i ran these under a custom water loop no issues. I now own an Intel 14th Gen 4900KS, which I currently run under a water loop. No issues so far, but some users have been experiencing issues. So, and uh, they really need to try and resolve this very, very quickly because a lot of people are not getting what they paid for. Uh, in terms of the uh, statement, this is according to Hardware Lux, and this is via video cards. Intel statement reads. Several motherboard manufacturers have released BIOS profiles labeled Intel Baseline Profile. However, these BIOS profiles are not the same as the Intel default settings. Recommendations that Intel has recently shared with its partners regarding the instability issues reported on the 13th and 14th Gen K SKU processors. Now, these Intel Baseline Profile BIOS settings appear to be based on power delivery guidance previously provided by Intel to manufacturers subscribing the various power delivery options for 13th and 14th gen k SKU processors based on motherboard capabilities. Intel is not recommending motherboard manufacturers to use baseline power delivery settings on boards capable of higher values, which is a relief. Intel recommends Intel default settings are a combination of firmware and power delivery features along with a section of possible power delivery profiles based on motherboard capabilities. Intel recommends customers to implement the highest power delivery profiles compatible with each individual motherboard design as noted in the table below. So I'm just going to stop it here because basically they're saying, look, if you've got a high end motherboard, just, you know, play it by the ear, just push it as much as you're comfortable with. But they do recommend some baseline settings that should work on all boards. I would imagine not everyone's going to be using Z790. So I guess that's where that comes from. So I just jumped into my BIOS now. I'm using the ASUS Maximus Z790 Apex Encore. And I'm just going to show you how to enable the uh, Intel default settings in your BIOS. So the first thing you want to do is start on the Extreme Tweaker menu. Scroll down until you see the setting called Internal CPU Power Management. You want to go down until you see the settings that say CEP. So you want to enable both of these. Current excursion protection. Intel recommends both of these are on. Now we'll get to the power limits in a moment. They also recommend that you turn off the unlimited ICC max. So you want to put that to disabled. Now uh, TJ Max for the Intel i9 13900K, I think all of the 12th, 13th, and 14th gen series is 100 degrees Celsius. So auto will be 100 degrees. They don't recommend that you change this. They don't want you to exceed this in any way. So just leave it at 100 or just leave it at auto. Now, when it comes to the power limits specifically, you can, uh, they, they say do not exceed 400 on the amps. So that's the ICC max. I'm going to put that to 400. And when it comes to the power limit, the extreme profile is 320. That's what I'm going to be using. Um, in terms of the package power time window, it's, you can put it to 56 seconds. That's the default. But honestly, it's not in use because Intel recommend you can use uh, the PL1 and PL2 being the same. Um, generally, how this is supposed to work, this the long duration package power limit should actually be your TDP for this CPU is 150 watts. But Intel are happy for you to have the power limit one and two be the same. The short duration is meant to be a bit higher just to give you that, that boost, but only to be sustained for a small amount of time. And this is where you get to choose how long that is. So I'm putting this also to 320 watt. Now that is all the settings we're going to be doing in the extreme tweaker uh, power management tab at least. Now we go back to the extreme tweaker main menu, go down one to thermal velocity boost. 
And here you want to enable thermal velocity boost voltage optimizations. You also want to enable the enhanced thermal velocity boost. It does say here that only supported on selected screws. So your CPU, depending on what model, you may not have this option. So just be aware of that. And just thermal velocity boost in general needs to be enabled. Okay. So you can now go back to the Extreme Tweaker main menu. That's all the settings you're going to be using in the Extreme Tweaker menu. I do want to also note that it doesn't actually say anything about the ASUS multi-core enhancement. What I found is if you leave this at auto and leave all the settings at auto, this will actually change. So d depending on the, the how hot the day is, um, your power limit might go from 320 to 253. So putting your settings manually or leaving this at auto will actually change depending on the conditions of, of your of your CPU cooling solution. So um, putting it, your settings in manually, even if it says auto, will bypass uh, the motherboard changing anything, just so you know. Or you could just disable and enforce all limits. It's up to you. But um, for me, this is fine. Now, you want to finally go to the advanced tab, go to CPU configuration, go down to CPU power management control, and then you want to enable your C states. That's at auto by default. And that's now enabled. Enhanced C states is uh, a further kind of uh, C state which allow you the cores kind of fluctuate all over the place. I personally don't use it, but it's up to you if you want to use it or not. So that's it. That is how you enable the Intel default settings. I'm going to now compare this uh, to the processor completely unlocked so everything's going to be unlimited and uh, we'll see if there's going to be a difference in performance while gaming kicking things off with shadow of the tomb raider so playing at a resolution of 1920 by 1080 of course to keep things cpu bound at 120 hertz and i'm also using the lowest preset to further make sure the cpu is the only thing that matters in this test and i'll be running the can benchmark And the results are in, as you can see, 370 FPS average for both default Intel settings and the unlimited power settings. So the 400 amps on the ICC Max definitely helps maintain the core clocks. And that led to exactly having the same performance as there was nothing to gain in this type of scenario. And this is the Intel i9-14900KS at stock. Moving on to Horizon Forbidden West. In terms of settings, I'm using a resolution of 1920 by 1080 again, just to keep things CPU bound. The LAA has the anti-aliasing method and the graphics preset is very low. Again, just to keep things very, very CPU bound. So I thought I'd try some in-game benchmarking as well to see if there's a difference in a non-CAN scenario. And you are seeing correctly the default settings from Intel seems to be performing a little bit better at the moment but probably over the course of the benchmark run things will even out as you can see I've got the average FPS the minimum and the 1% low for you guys to see and right now um, the unlimited profile seems to be a little bit behind but I'm 
pretty surprised by that because the four clocks are both at 5.9 gigahertz and 4.5 on on the E's e core. Um, I didn't do any overclocking. This is the 4900K completely stock. So um, the default settings that Intel recommends seems to be not losing any performance compared to our unlocked Jeez, CPU. What happened here? Where this type of scenario would um, benefit the unlimited is in a multi-core scenario but again um, this is just about gaming and uh, from what I can see if these settings provide better stability uh, then you're not really going to be losing out on performance as you can see uh, around 219 218 fps average across the whole benchmark run so not really losing out either way So next up is Cyberpunk 2077, playing at a resolution of 1920 by 1080. Again, just to keep things as CPU bound as possible. High settings is fine, as there's no ray tracing being used, so the game does become pretty CPU bound. As you can see, it, it does come with AMD Validity Super Resolution, so there is upscaling even at 1080p. And finally, the hybrid CPU utilizations are auto, so it uses the E cores, which actually helps in CPU band scenarios. I'm not sure what it is about Cyberpunk 2077, but it draws a tremendous amount of CPU power. Uh, maybe it's running AVX loads, I'm not too sure, but let's look at that 260 watt plus. I know it's 1080p and the processor is working very, very hard to, to basically give every frame it possibly can to the RTX 4090 and it's a losing battle because barely holding 50% utilization but the main thing is um, it seems the Intel default settings is more than enough to provide um, the performance you need without having to run unlimited power limits and over 400 amps so it will keep your CPU in check in terms of high workloads because it will only be limited at 321 you don't really need to worry about losing performance in game so i would have to say these settings are working pretty well and it doesn't seem that there is too much benefit to using unlimited uh, settings at least if you're just gaming and um, if you're looking at that fps as well on average 178 each so pretty much identical there is a slight difference in the minimum one percent low but you know, if I ran three runs, it would probably work out to be pretty much the same. So this may be the best way to run the chip in terms of stability if you are having issues. Moving on to F123 now. Playing at 1920 by 1080 at 120 hertz, only using TAA 16 times an isostropic filtering. When it comes to the settings, I'm using the ultra low preset. And finally, in terms of the CAN benchmark, um, I'm actually running on the Miami circuit with clear dry weather and the TV pod view with one lap. And uh, let's see if there's a difference in performance. So you can already see there's a slight performance improvement with the unlimited power limit profile and this is probably the first game that i've observed this to be uh actual benefit so that is pretty interesting um it does seem that the power consumption is still roughly the same but there's still a improvement in performance there so that's pretty Pretty strange to see. I wonder what the actual average is going to be come the results, but yeah, it does seem that there's a slight little bit of performance being left on the table there with the uh, Intel default profile. But it's hardly anything to be concerned about. It looks around seven, just five FPS in that type of range. So it's very, very fine margins, and. Um, me personally, of course, I play at 4K and um, there'd be even finer margins at that resolution as things would be more GPU bound. So in summary, 
um, it does seem that this is uh, not going to impact your game performance at least for using the extreme Intel default um, profile. If you use the performance one, maybe that things will change. But um, if you're using something like a 3900K that standard uh, core clocks 5.5 gigahertz, you should be fine. But if you're using like a 4900KS or even maybe a 4900K, you may find yourself losing um, a few FPS when the core clock starts to fluctuate. Anyway, the results are in, as you can see, on the default profile getting an average of 481. And on our limited profile, 486. So 5 FPS difference, but a big difference in the minimum FPS, 410 to 337. So that is pretty much it for me, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. And as always, thanks for watching.